the Flower Mountain real estate market has changed, and I'm going to be telling you how. So today we're going to be talking about how the Flower Mound real estate market has changed from this time last year to compared to today. And all this information we're pulling together are from the multiple listing services, really good solid data that we're using to be able to give to you. Because we believe when people have really good information, they're going to make sound decisions so that way they can have peace of mind making real estate decisions for them and their family. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and dive into the numbers to be able to show you how the market has really changed. Changed. Now, when we look at the numbers, as far as the homes are actually on the market or the number of homes has actually decreased by 31.5%. Then we look at, okay, how many homes have actually sold and they've actually increased by 21%. So the number of homes for sale are definitely low, but the number of homes have sold have definitely increased, which is giving us a seller, deep seller's market, meaning that we don't have enough homes for, to sell and we have too many buyers that are looking for homes, which we're seeing a lot of multiple offers situations. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, I'm seeing some homes that are sitting on the market for a while. Well, regardless what real estate market we're in, whether it's in a good seller's market we're in right now or even a buyer's market, meaning that we have too many homes to sell and not enough buyers, it always comes down to price and condition, which all they have to match in order to be able to hit the home run for you to be able to get the home sold. So when we look at that, we're looking at how many days on the market is it taking to sell a home right now here in Flower Mount? And it's taking 35 days to be able to do that. So, you know, with all this being said, how is this affecting the pricing of the homes? We've actually seen the home prices go up by six and a half percent from this time last year. So put it in dollars and cents, we're looking at $28,000 that the median price has increased uh, for the homes here in Flower Mound. The other key factor into all of this is not just in the pre-existing market, meaning the homes that, you know, they're already built, they're already lived in and all that. How is this comparing to the new construction that's going on in our area? Well, the since COVID has hit, uh, it shut down all the lumber mills up in Canada. So that has caused a supply and demand issue for you know, lumbers and other building materials. Just in the lumber prices alone, it has increased the price of lumber anywhere from 130 to 160%. So what the builders have done, and this is nationwide, it's not just local, but nationwide the builders have gotten together. Like, how do we accommodate this? How do we make this happen? So they've come out and said, like in the Wall Street Journal and some other uh, publications that they're going to be increasing the price of new construction homes by 16% to offset the pricing of the lumber and other materials if they're having a shortage issue problems. Not only is it costing more in the pocketbook, but it's also uh, you know, creating some timeline delays as well. So what is a 16% price increase in a $400,000 home? Well, that's about a $64,000 hit. So as far as with that, you're thinking, okay, how are they gonna implement it? They can't just automatically just you know increase the price by $64,000. What they're gonna be doing is increasing the price anywhere from five to $7,000 you know, every couple weeks or maybe a month, depending on how their sales go to be able to help absorb this price increase that they're having to do. Now, if you're thinking about buying a home from a builder or new construction, now is the time to be able to jump to do that. So that way you can be able to go ahead and lock in a certain price, whatever that price is, before the prices continue to increase. That way it's saving you a lot of money uh, as far as on not only purchase price, but also at a great interest rate as well. So you're also probably wondering, okay, well, if I'm looking to buy a house, how does this work as well? You need to definitely make sure that you're pre-qualified up front and you've got a really good strong local lender to be able to help you with all that. And also to be able to have a real estate agent on your side that knows how to be able to negotiate and get your offers accepted on the homes. Because right now we're seeing a lot of, a lot of offers on just one property and how that offer comes in and having that pre-qualification or pre-approval letter speaks volumes of how solid you are as a buyer and for that seller to be more uh, apt to be able to take your offer as well. So if you have any questions, whether it's buying a home or selling a home in this market, 
please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than glad to answer any questions that you have and also to be able to guide you through this process so that way you have peace of mind with the decisions that you're needing to make. If you're wondering how the housing market is going to fare after the presidential elections, stay tuned because the next video I'm going to be doing, we're going to be talking about that. I hope you found this information helpful and we'll see you next week.